Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Be Is For Build. As promised, Jeff is here with me today and we are jumping into the 240. We are, hey, it is. Uh, we're jumping into the 240, the wiring side of things. So we're gonna take the BMW M5 wiring harness and we are going to mock fit it throughout the car. We're gonna rerun the uh, engine harness and we're gonna start plugging things in, plug the computers in and start uh, reading them and seeing what they're upset about, seeing what we can troubleshoot and see what we can figure out. And then we're gonna see if the engine will start, if we get that far. Stay tuned. All right, so in this car, there are two main wiring harnesses. There is the engine harness, which you can kind of see down there. That gets placed right around here. And then you have the body harness, which is what I pulled out of the M5 uh, about a week and a half ago. And that runs through the rest of the car, connecting literally every other thing together. Um, so what you're gonna see us do today is be zip tying these harnesses in the relative place that they go. We're not gonna do a proper full-on installation of all of them because everything has to be torn off this car uh, for the frame, and the body to go into paint. So a lot of people have mentioned, you know, are you gonna do rust prevention and stuff like that? Absolutely, this all gets painted. Um, so that's why we're not doing a full installation of any of this wiring. So Jeff and I are gonna start with the engine harness right now. We're gonna zip tie mount it into this area right here and then plug in everything that we can find for the engine and transmission that belongs to that harness. All right, getting the engine harness kind of mounted and plugged back in was much easier than I remember it, probably because we haven't plugged the rest of the car into it, but plugging it into itself was just simply, we got it mounted, zip tie mounted, and then there are a bunch of connectors that go into the transmission, and that's it. It only connects up to the transmission, so we plugged all of those things in. It's about four or five different um, wires, and that's good to go. So the next thing is, got about 150 pounds of wires over here. Jeff and I are gonna drape them over the car, over the roof like you've kind of seen before, and then we're gonna start kind of moving them into the car and, and laying them in the relative space that they need to go. This is where the cluster starts. We've got the wires run throughout the car, kind of how they go, and then we went ahead and plugged in the ECU. Uh, one interesting thing, I don't remember how this went, but on the ECU there's five plug slots and only three of them are used, leaving leaving two of them open, one there and one there. Can't really remember if that's normal or not, but um, somebody will surely tell me in the comments. There's absolutely no other wires to plug into there, so. I don't know, I guess we'll find out. So um, now Jeff and I are gonna go ahead and go through the front end, plug anything else we can in the front end, and then we'll go ahead and jump into the dash system <laughs> and start plugging in some of this craziness. This is where we're just gonna kinda, kinda wing it. Quick update, we ran the loom through the driver's side, connected up the dashboard, all the steering column stuff, the brake pedal stuff. We're gonna grab the accelerator pedal in a second, and then we're gonna move on to the center console stuff, the uh, stereo and the center console screen, and anything over there in the passenger side. We got everything from the center section that I believe we're gonna need to monitor things hooked up. So we got the computers right there, we got the shifter, we got the iDrive stuff, and so the iDrive selector, all that plugged in just fine. So a lot of what we're doing here is an experiment to see like, will the car start with the bare minimums plugged in? So we've got a lot, a lot of stuff unplugged. Um, so we're kind of bypassing everything except for grounds. Obviously we're gonna, we need to come back and deal with grounds. You can see like three are disconnected there. Um, bypassing everything, going all the way back here. We're not plugging in the uh, fuel pumps because there's no fuel in there. I don't want to run them dry. So we're, we're gonna try and see what happens with even no fuel pumps. Um, and, and we're moving on 
back, 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 uh, which leads us to the battery. So um, we're gonna go ahead and grab the battery, drop that in there, figure out a, um, you know, a connection for this so it can attach to the battery post. We're gonna ground the battery out, get that all connected, and then we will show you our situation, our solution for all these different grounding clips on the car. Okay, we got the battery placed in here. We got the hot lead ready to uh, connect up with this thing and everything plugged in. I should get those off of there. Uh, it's not good to arc power tools across the battery. Uh, and then Jeff and I went through and deadheaded a couple uh, bundles of cut wires to make sure that we don't short any of those out. So the next thing that we have is all across this wiring loom, there are bundles of, of grounded cables and cables that need to be grounded like this. Um, and I don't want to drill a bunch of different holes throughout the body in different places to temporarily screw these all in because we don't know exactly where they go. So, enter this massive uh, sheet of steel, strip of steel. We're gonna run this in a big U shape from the up front all the way back, around the back, and back to the passenger side. If one isn't long enough, we'll use two. And what we're gonna do is, it's gonna take a trip down the wiring loom, connecting all of the grounding parts, and going that way, and then everywhere that we can, we're going to um, use clamps and clamp the steel to the frame, so it has lots of grounded connections as well along the steel. So we're kind of linking them all together in one temporary big steel sheet, and then, you know, vi vicing, vicing? No, what am I trying to say? Clamping? Clamping. These thinging them to the body. I'm losing my mind, guys. This is day 14 in a row. This is a very fun version of controlled chaos. <laughs> so you can see our metal strip, it uh, connects into all the grounds down there. Uh, down there it runs up all the grounds over here and then we have it um, clamped, <laughs> clamped down to that cross member right there. Then running down around here and then um, we have a secondary one over here that's clamped down to there. Some grounds over here. So uh, two main clamps are right there and right there that ground it down to the chassis and then that's to there. Uh, engine ground goes to there. There is another engine ground that's supposed to be down here and go to the body uh, or the frame, but we don't have that one right now so hopefully that won't cause us any major problems. So now is the moment of truth. Well, in a second is the moment of truth. Jeff is gonna connect that up and then I'm gonna sit in there and I'm gonna bring the key with me and we're, we're just gonna see what happens. All right, Jeff, go ahead and plug it in. We'll listen for any fun new sounds. Pops, crackles. All right, fingers crossed. We won't hear fuel pumps. We got a spark, that's good. Okay. Things clicked. I saw lights on the... Hey, we got a light on the dashboard! It doesn't know that the key's here. The iDrive handle light lit up. Let's go check things out. Our start button is lit up. I'm gonna give it a shot. I hit the start button. It's saying it has no key. The key is in my hand, so that's an issue. Oh, what if I put the key in the... Oh, boys! That's hey, hey, it says BMW! All right. It's watch, thinking watch about things. Leg in case it does try to crank. No, it won't, it won't. Warning, the system traction control. How do we hit accept? This is awesome. Oh, we don't have the controls in there. Oh wait, it went away. It went away. Ah, cool. All right. That's what it's call system malfunction. All right, so here we go. We're get, we're getting into the uh, the errors now. Oh no, the passenger restraint system is disabled. This is our iDrive, <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and and go up and clear that. It's not happy. These things lag a little bit when they're first starting up. Oh, it's it's like the up button is just not it's not going up. You have it backwards? No. That was it? That was it for warnings? No. No, turn on the radio, man. I want to listen to some tunes. <laughs> I'm really surprised that's all it's saying. Well, what's next, Jeff? Do we try and start the car? I've... It's 
worth a shot. Worst case will happen, it won't start, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you you jump back there, you're on the battery uh, power. If it starts to crank, you're gonna go ahead and pull that thing off, okay? All right. All right. Three, two, oh wait, I gotta hit the brake pedal. <laughs> That's gonna be oh, tricky. <laughs> Let me get my foot down in there. God, this, <laughs> this feels so stupid. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. It is not trying to start the engine. All right, well. Oh, I turned the car off. All right guys, just to get you caught up, so obviously we tried to start the car, but we didn't get it to fully crank over, so we got some troubleshooting to do. Jeff and I did a little bit of troubleshooting, um, and then we decided to go have a beer, and, and that was two days ago. So, carrying on today, uh, we got some more troubleshooting to do. This car has an engine grounding strap that we don't have attached yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and install it. It goes from the engine somewhere right about back there uh, to the chassis right there. So I'll get that installed, and then we'll see if we're getting any more readings from the ECU. Okay, we got that grounding strap on right there. Uh, obviously when you're troubleshooting, you wanna change as few things as possible. It's good to make one change, check it, one change, and continue on. So we're gonna try and do that as long as I don't get impatient. The other thing that we did do, do though is uh, charge up the battery over the weekend. So this battery should be fully charged, which will help us because last time our voltage was crap. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and see if it gives us any other information. All right, our new grounding strap did not change anything. Basically, we're, we're using an OBD2 scanner right now trying to talk to the engine, and uh, we're just not able to communicate with the engine right now, the engine's computer. So something's going on there we, where we don't have a connection quite yet. So I'm gonna keep troubleshooting on that. While I do that, uh, I'm gonna throw you guys over to Eric, and Eric is gonna be working on our uh, steering shaft U-joint uh, setup thing. I found out, I don't know where that piece is, but that piece that I thought was aluminum, a lot of you guys said was stainless steel. It was, in fact, stainless steel, so thanks for the heads up there. I need to do a little bit more practice on identifying metals clearly um, and so Eric's gonna go ahead and start modifying that so we can link all the way to our uh, steering rack All right, let me get you guys up to date. So we have way more stuff plugged in than we really wanted to. Um, and uh, we're still continuing to troubleshoot. So what, where we're at right now is when you hit the on button the first time, um, it should tell us what gear the transmission is in and a few other things. And then you hit it the second time and like you know the needles flip and other things happen. And we're not getting the gear in the first on position and we're not getting the needles flipping. So it's unhappy with something. It's like the body harness is not talking to the engine harness. So we've been continuing to work on that. Um, uh, and just by furthering plugging in a bunch more stuff. So anyways, um, and then Eric's been working on this. So this is what this looks like now. He welded that back end to that, um, the stainless steel, and then the front end goes to the, our new stainless steel rod, which slips in here. Um, sorry, this stuff is kind of hot. That slips in here. So uh, later on, Eric will go ahead and um, drill a hole through both of these things, and we will send a bolt and a nut through both of those things that will solidify that onto there. Um, and then we're also going to need to weld in a bearing um, that I already bought, and the bearing's gonna come off of here, and it's gonna hold that shaft so it can't move, um, and that'll be much, much better for this whole situation. So that is there, and um, Eric is also right now working on the ABS module to try and pull that over here. We're, like I said, we're just adding stuff on. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the SRS um, computer and system like that. Just see if it does anything good. We gone done it. No shit. There is one plug way down here way down here, in here, it was labeled steering column body, I could not find out where it went, it plugs in right there, and that was it. We <laughs> plugged in so many other things, this thing is complete chaos. Well, let me show you, Eric, will you go ahead and add power to the car? Let me show you what happens, we'll pull the key out. Oh, I can't really. 
<laughs> oh, yep, okay, see, it's on. <laughs> hey, let me turn the car off. Okay, car's off-ish right now. So that, what you're hearing is the fuel pump priming and all sorts of weird shit inside the car starts to try and go. So anyways, it's on the, uh, is it, is it in the off mode right now? I can't really tell. I don't know, this might turn it on again, here we go. Okay, no, that's turned it off. Okay, so the car's off now, you're gonna see that screen go off. Perfect. Car's all off, that's cool. Next one, that's gonna turn it, turning things on. We're getting things clicking under there. That's very exciting for us because we've never had <laughs> that happen before. And then now that the car's on, this one, Eric, get ready to pull the, pull the plug. Um, this one is going to start to prime the fuel system and get the car ready to start. Oh no, that, yeah, there we go. So now it's saying, hey, you don't have enough fuel. It's not actually priming the fuel system. It's doing some stuff. And then what happens if we hit it again? Oh, that's off. Okay, so it's learning some stuff. It's doing a few different things, but this is actually throwing all the right codes that we need and um, it's telling us our gear now. So this is a huge, huge improvement. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the fuel system. So hopefully it won't try and uh, prime the fuel pump anymore. Um, we're replacing that fuel pump anyways. That's why I'm allowing it to like potentially suck up metal shavings. Um, and then we'll uh, scan some codes and see what it does and see if we can try and get it to attempt to crank. All right, so we didn't have much luck uh, reading the codes. For some reason, our code reader's not making it back to the ECU. We're not really sure. But a lot of different stuff is working. So we're gonna try and see if it'll crank. Now, it, there's a possibility that without it seeing fuel pressure, it won't even try and crank. That's a pretty large possibility. Uh, but we're gonna give it a shot and see what happens. If it does start to crank, what happens with a lot of uh, automatic starting cars is it doesn't stop cranking until it sees engine RPM, which it won't. So it would continue to crank a lot, which we don't want. All right, everything is ready. Brake pedal's depressed. It's not trying to start. You can hear it make a sound where it's like thinking about it, but it's not seeing fuel pressure, so I don't think it's gonna... That sound right there, yeah. So that's okay though. Um, we uh, we can add fuel pressure very soon in the next episode or something like that, and then we'll we'll see what happens. All right. Well, one cool thing about me being gone drinking for two days is the drive shaft is already ready. So we're gonna like unplug. We have to. We're gonna leave the wiring mess here because although it's crazy, we need to work with it until we make sure that this car is gonna start. We need to bring over our ABS distribution block and our fuel lines, uh, and then I think we'll get the car to start tomorrow. So, uh, but we do want to install our drive shaft just make sure it's gonna fit up and everything like that. So we're just gonna move the fuel tank out of the way and uh, bolt up our drive shaft. All right, there we go. That's our drive line installed. It's really easy when you just have somebody else do it and then you just take the part home and, and bolt it up. So <laughs> that's it. We were obviously worried about it uh, being with that, that offset, but you can kind of see with that CV there and that U joint there that it's, it's gonna work out. Uh, well, we'll know more when we drive it, but for now it looks like it's gonna work out. So there we go. All right guys, that is a wrap on this multi-day episode. We will be back tomorrow to uh, plumb the fuel system and try and get this thing to start. Keep your fingers crossed. Not all day though, that might be a little bit a hindrance to your daily life, but maybe just when you get back. Anyways, uh, we got new stuff for sale on the store. We got shirts like this, we got uh, shop flags like that, we got new key tags, we got all sorts of stuff like that. So head over to bsforbuild.com if you want to help out in support. If not, check out our free video game, ds for drift ds4drift.com. Go download a free video game, it's very fun, get platinum on all levels, I dare you. That's it guys, I'll see you tomorrow.